dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. I saw roaches in the Christmas tree scurrying from one side to the next. They weren't even afraid of the rape we sprayed and sprayed. Once those eggs were laid, it made our holiday cheer fade. Yes, I saw roaches in the Christmas tree. Did you know roaches reflect the light? It's true. Oh, it should be against the law. I can't believe that I saw roaches in the Christmas tree last night. <laughs> ding dong, ding dong. I did. I really did see roaches in the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> a holiday classic for you. What's up, guys? This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me <laughs> once again, my friends. Hope all is well with you. Hope uh, you're being safe on this uh, holiday. Hope everyone's traveling back and forth safely. Um, listen, guys, we want to talk about the Marvels. As we know, the Marvels is a dismal, dismal, painful, embarrassing failure. And because of that, there's a lot of fingers being pointed, a lot of blame going around and everything like that. And I think that it's important to point out this article that I see from The Root, where they are employing their black girl magic to protect and, and defend the director of the Marvels, Nia Diacosta. All right, so let's get into what they have to say here because there's a point here that I think that they're gradually coming to that I've been talking to. I've been talking about this for years, right? And I hope that people are beginning to understand where I'm coming from because I take a lot of heat from this. If you've been following me on Twitter, you see that this week in particular, I've been getting dumped on for my take my suggestion even implying that the MCU had a better laid out plan in phase one and two and all that stuff. In other words, the, the best days of Marvel and the MCU are behind us right now. It doesn't have to be that way, but as it stands, it is. A lot of people didn't appreciate that. They were attacking me on Twitter, but let's get into what this article has to say right here. And the headline goes a little something like this. Hit it! Amid the Marvel's box office failure... Black women will defend Nia DaCosta at all costs. As Marvel reckons with the disappointing performance of its latest movie, we're defending the phenomenal director from unwarranted attacks. You go, girl. Let's see what it has to say about this, okay? Uh, it starts off. With the Marvels poised to become one of the MCU's lowest grossing films ever, there's a lot of finger pointing and blame circulating through uh, Marvel Studios and Disney. Unfortunately, it seems like someone has decided to center that blame on Nia DaCosta. Since the film's release earlier this month, she's been the target of a rash of hit pieces in Hollywood trades, and it needs to stop! Yeah, we here in the fandom know about that rash of hit pieces, don't we? There are plenty of reasons that the Captain Marvel sequel didn't perform well at the box office, but one of those is definitely not the movie's quality. All right, talk about lack of self-awareness here. Now, everyone's been talking about not just this movie, but Marvel's movies, the MC movies of late have been lower in quality. I mean, if you look at some of the older movies, especially when you get to like uh, Infinity War and Endgame and all of that stuff, you see a much better quality of film. It's like what we've been getting since then, it's a well-known fact that it's been lacking in the CGI department. Uh, the writing has also been like really, really struggling. A lot of people have been pointing that out. It's not just this movie. But anyway, it goes on to say, The Marvels follows Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and uh, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, as they fight an old enemy of Carol's who is now threatening the entire universe. It's a really fun movie with an emotional and entertaining story, captivating characters, and genuinely crowd-pleasing moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like uh, visiting a planet where everybody sings. Yeah, that's crowd-pleasing. Plus, it does all of this in an hour and 45 minutes, proving you don't need to keep the audience hostage for over three hours to tell an entertaining and interesting story. And of course, that is true. However, we all know that this movie was plagued by rewrites and reshoots and all of that stuff. Now, this article wants to ignore that because they want to defend the black woman. Black girl magic. Uh, it says here, if you're a fan of Carol, Monica, and Kamala, it delivers everything you want from the next chapter of their character arcs. It was a reminder of why we became so invested in the franchise in the first place. The cast, crew, and DaCosta hit it out of the park? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not the narrative some Hollywood's execs and trades want to tell you. 
Talk about in denial, guys. It says, ahead of the film's release, when the opening numbers were projected to be low, we saw stories pop up about DaCosta leaving the set before post-production was complete, a rumor that the director had to clarify, stating that everyone knew scheduling delays meant she would have to eventually leave for her next project. Quick question. Have you ever, ever heard anyone say something like that about white male MCU directors like the Russo brothers or John Favreau? Of course not, because they get plenty of room to do whatever they want. Okay, let's ignore the fact that the Russo brothers and John Favreau actually deliver. And if they fail, well then, they admit their failure and they go back and do better. They don't come up with things like this, okay? DaCosta, unfortunately, has not delivered unless you lower your standards way down, but we're gonna get into that in a minute. On Monday, The Hollywood Reporter prominently featured an article with the headline, Why Marvel's Director Nia DaCosta Bailed on the Cast and Crew Screening. This obvious insult to the director sparked an outcry of criticism from black women who thought the outlet was attacking DaCosta for something that is commonplace in the industry. Directors don't regularly attend these screenings. In this case, reports surfaced around social media that DaCosta wasn't even invited. The only reason to try and make this a big deal is to hang an unwarranted, unprofessional label on her. From the moment it became clear the Marvels was going to underperform, there has been a concerted effort to undermine Nia DaCosta. What's rage inducing is that it seems to only become the plan when a woman or woman of color is the director. Plus, it seems like no one wants to discuss the obvious elephant in the room when it comes to the movie's poor performance. Now, of course, that would be the uh, SAG after strike. Okay, so they're talking about that and how it stopped them from doing promotion and everything. So they're going to blame it on the strike. Listen, man, the actual movie was lacking. Okay, I'm not going to say that it didn't have some entertainment value for some people. Of course it does. I mean, I've been on TikTok. I've seen people get thousands, if not millions of views, just laying around sleeping. I kid you not. You can see that on TikTok as we speak. Someone has got the camera on them as they're sleeping. And you got simps in the chat talking about, oh my God, you look so good. Got, got, what is that? G-Y-A-T, got. <laughs> but there's always something out there for someone. So that's not even the question whether it had entertainment value. The fact of the matter is that it lost a ton of money. It is one of, if not the lowest performing MCU movie to date. And it was headed up by a black woman. But they even put a positive spin on that one, okay? So anyway, it goes on to say, if the studio wanted to give it the best chance at success, it could have moved it to a later release date so the cast could promote it properly. No, it would have been the same thing. You guys, like I said, you are not self-aware at all. You don't know what's surrounding this, okay? It has nothing to do with hating on her as a black woman, okay? That's the reason why Disney and Marvel hired her, because she was a black woman, because they have the soft bigotry of low expectations. That's the reason why this movie is now certified the lowest performing MCU film, but they're still going to turn around and tell you that Nia DaCosta uh, has made history because she is the highest grossing black woman director in the MCU. All right. Now, the shame of that is that if you really look at it, black women, Nia DaCosta, you could have said the same thing if you had put a retard. If you, if you gave a retard director's credit on this, a one-legged person, uh, director's credit on this. The same history would have been made. If you gave a dog director's credit on this, it would have been the same history. Rover made history as the highest grossing dog to ever direct um, MCU film. It would have been the same thing. This is nothing to brag about. This is the reason why they gave this to you in the first place. I'm sorry to say you don't live down to people's expectations. You try to surpass them. You try to live up to them. You try to go well beyond them. But this movie, a clear failure, is being touted as making history because a black woman was the one that was the head of it. Now, uh, you know, I want to go on here because uh, they say something here that's very telling that shows me that on some level, they understand the point that I've been trying to make for years. It says here, uh, the studio has pushed back other projects due to production delays and creative team changes, so we know Disney and Marvel Studios are willing to make tough decisions when necessary. This time around, it feels like they just hung the Marvels out to dry without caring about the effect it would have on the characters, actors, or fans. And now, they're dealing with a serious financial hit 
And now that they're dealing with a serious financial hit, they've reverted to an age old solution. Blame the black woman. Yeah, and this is what we've been talking about now for a long time. They use black people, in this case, the black woman, black girl magic, to hide their substandard content behind. They're using you as a shield, black woman. I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. This is what Marvel has been doing. This is the reason why I said the same thing with Star Wars when it came to uh, Riva, uh, Moses Ingram. You know, when or, or even Finn, for that matter, even uh, John Boyega talked about this, how they promoted the Finn character, but they didn't develop the Finn character because they're only interested in using us as novelties, as gimmicks. And the sooner we understand that, the sooner we can hold them accountable for the ultimate damage that they're doing for us in our professional uh, um, uh, image. You know, our um, the way we come across, you know, to the public and everything, because if they keep putting us in our image behind their substandard work, you will get no respect for that. Nia DaCosta delivered an exceptional film. That's debatable. That is one of the franchise's best. That's a flat out lie. She absolutely does not deserve to have her name disrespected and besmirched in this manner. It also sends a very loud message to other directors of color that when the chips are down, Marvel Studios doesn't have their back. Oh my God, Becky, did you hear that? They're finally starting to understand what I've been talking about for the longest time. I get called a coon for pointing this out years ago, okay? But you're taking baby steps to the root. You're taking baby steps. You're starting to understand what I've been talking about. They did the same thing with Wakanda Forever. They broke the story. They broke the lore, what, what it was supposed to be. And they hid behind the concept of Black girl magic, they hid behind the concept of uplifting black women when they're, n they're doing nothing of the sort. Let's hear that again, guys. It feels so good. She absolutely doesn't deserve to have her name disrespected and besmirched in this manner. That's my point, too. She doesn't. I wish she had gotten better. It also sends a very loud message to other directors of color and actors and writers, for that matter, that when the chips are down, Marvel Studios doesn't have their back. They don't, guys. This is my point. They use you as their novelty, they use you as their gimmick, and then they throw you away, never to be heard of since. And it's a shame because we only think about this and talk about this once the damage is done. All right, you don't want to listen to the fans. You definitely don't want to listen to the white fans because you already have the studios, multi-billion dollar studios to call you racist and homophobes and sexist. And you don't want to hear from people like me. I've said this millions of times. You guys, you need to be sending them to me. Send them to me. Send them to the Dark Council. We'll break this shit down the way it should be broken down. I break it. I slam it on the floor and make sure it's broke, baby. You can't get around this because this is the truth that they want to ignore. All right. And I've been trying to ring this bell for the longest, but it is encouraging a little bit to think that somewhere somebody is starting to put the pieces together. Unfortunately, it's not fast enough. And I fear that they'll go right back to being defensive about it and trying to be in denial about it, about their, what they're using these black creators for ultimately is, is once again, just brownie points, you know, virtue signaling, uh, gimmicks, uh, novelties, and then they just throw you away, guys. But anyway, I just wanted to point that out, okay, because this is an example, of course, of what I've been talking about for the longest, guys, for the longest. So anyway, you can get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this. As always, I thank you guys uh, for liking, for sharing, for subscribing, for the super thanks. And once again, you guys, have a happy and safe holiday. This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.